All right, I have a uh, special guest who is uh, joining us today. We've got back for the second time this season, uh, Kevin Bowen. Uh, he is with the uh, Indianapolis Colts, uh, writer for Colts.com. How's everything going, Kevin? It's good. Uh, anytime it's Colts Patriots week, it's definitely busy, uh, especially that will be the first home matchup of this rivalry in five years for the Colts. So uh, it's definitely been a busy week, and it'll be a long wait till Sunday Night Football uh, at 8.30. I know. I hear you there. Everyone is certainly looking forward to this big matchup. All right, so let's go right in, uh, Kevin, and just kind of touch on some things we uh, spoke about a little bit earlier in the season. Right now, as far as the offensive side of the football is concerned, uh, how are the Colts uh, feeling uh, in regards to their offensive line play? Uh, are they happy with the protection that Andrew Luck is getting? Are they happy with uh, the way the offense is progressing in the running game? I know that uh, uh, we spoke about that earlier in the season. Uh, the Colts looking to improve uh, and get some balance in the running game. Right now, currently ranked 14th, uh, averaging about 113 yards a game. Uh, to people on the outside looking in with all the yards that Andrew Luck is passing for, the running game might not seem impactful, but being uh, basically in the middle uh, of the NFL pack is certainly progress from last year. Uh, how are the Colts feeling about those areas? Yeah, definitely. I think when the Colts have needed to run the football, they have done that. Uh, we saw great balance earlier in the year against the Philadelphia game. You're trying to play keep away from Nick Foles and that offense. And then uh, the Cincinnati game a few weeks back, a lot of people remember that for the Colts defense pitching a shutout. But the offense had over 500 total yards, uh, 170 of it coming on the ground. That was the most rushing yards the Colts have had in uh, over a year. So, again, when you've needed to run the football, you have been able to do it. But at the same time, for some reason, teams are, you know, stacking the box, seven, eight, nine guys, and that has allowed this Colts offense to become the premier passing attack in the NFL right now. You know, Andrew Luck is, is on pace to shatter the attempts record for a single season. Um, he's on pace to challenge Peyton Manning's single season, single season record for passing yards. So they haven't had to rely on the running game as much as, uh, maybe you would expect. I expect that to change a little bit in the second half of the season. Teams have got to start to respect the passing attack and have got to force the Colts to be able to run the football. So, Mod Bradshaw, Trent Richardson, uh, both guys have been very productive this season, both over 500 yards in total offense. And the offensive line, I think, has played solid. Uh, Andrew Luck, for, for how many passing, passing attempts he's had, has not been sacked at that high of a rate. He's taken maybe a few too many hits, particularly in the past couple weeks. So, um, That'll be something to watch going forward. But again, when you're dropping back 40 and you know, sometimes even 50 times a game, you got to expect to take a, take some hits. So um, I think the Colts off of the line has, has had you know kind of a, a, a shuffling group for really the whole entire season in the interior spots. Um, I believe they have, the, have had the most starting combinations of any in the NFL. So the group is starting to get healthy. Right tackle guys are shareless and a little bit banged up this week. But uh, if he can go, the Colts will have their starting line back intact. Yeah, definitely. It seems like uh, that's something that gets overlooked a lot. Uh, a lot of teams uh, having a mix and max, mix and match and shuffle uh, on the offensive line. So that's certainly understandable there. Uh, moving over to the defensive side of the football, uh, a couple areas that we spoke on earlier in the season, uh, primarily uh, how we're uh, Indianapolis going to plan on uh, getting a pass rush and getting uh, pressure on opposing quarterbacks with the uh, absence of uh, all pro uh, pass rusher Robert Mathis. And uh, right now, Indianapolis is ranked 27th uh, versus the pass. Um, you know, how do Colts feel in that area? Have they found one person to uh, try to manufacture production for uh, Mathis's absence? Has it been a team effort? And also, uh, do, do, does the team feel the lack of pass rush uh, is kind of leading to them being ranked 27th versus the pass? Yeah, I mean, I, I think when you're trying to replace Mathis in 19 and a half sacks last year, it can't just be one person. 11 guys have had sacks this year. Um, again, in their wins, especially in that five-game winning streak, the pass rush was very effective. Uh, guys like Eric Wald and Bjorn Verner are getting after the quarterback. Rookie Jonathan Newsom has kind of emerged here in the past couple of weeks as a, as a pass rush specialist off the edge. In that Pittsburgh game where Ben Roethlisberger threw for over 500 yards of, of total offense, they were able, only able to hit him one time and I believe, about 48 pass attempts. So, again, in their wins, they've done a very good job of getting after the quarterback, and that's going to have to be a key again on Sunday. Tom Brady does such a good job of getting the ball out quick. He knows he, he he's not the most fleet of foot quarterback, but he does a great job of knowing his progressions, when to get the ball out, and uh, he just has a great sense of that, of that ticking clock in the pocket. 
in the Patriots' two losses, Brady's been sacked seven times. In their seven wins, he's only been sacked seven times. So again, I think uh, Chuck Pagano talked about it earlier this week. It's paramount to get some sort of pressure on Brady, interior pressure, push that pocket back a little bit. Um, I think the Colts secondary has played pretty well. you got to remember, when you're scoring this amount of points and you're getting out of these big leads, from the other side of the ball, teams have got to play catch ups. Teams are going to be throwing the football. Uh, when Vontae Davis has been in the lineup, this pass defense has been very, very effective. Davis is playing at a Pro Bowl level. He got hurt early in that Pittsburgh game, and that really uh, hampered the Colts' pass defense. So he was back out on the field against the Giants, and uh, him and Greg Toller are that duo that have been very, very effective. And now this week, the pass is going to be you know, can you guard? Rob Gronkowski is a walking mismatch and is playing at an all-pro level during the Patriots on a five-game win streak. Yeah, excuse me. I definitely have to uh, uh, agree with you there. Um, real quick, let's move over. I wanted to talk about uh, a passing of the torch situation. I know it's not in the form of Peyton Manning still being there, but for so many years in Indianapolis, uh, this franchise has been storied uh, with the one-two punch of uh, Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison. After Harrison retired, it was on to Peyton Manning to Reggie Wayne. Uh, now we're seeing Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton, uh, both of these players in their third year. They certainly have emerged as one of the best one-two combinations in the NFL. And again, with these guys being so young, only in their third year, uh, I'd imagine I, I cannot see uh, for, for the future, foreseeable future, uh, Indianapolis letting go of Hilton. We know they're not letting go of Luck. Um, so how has that come together? You know, are, are these players who spend time uh, in the off season working together? And, uh, you know, what is their uh, chemistry like? These guys have an extremely bright future ahead of them. Yeah, they do. And I think talking to Matt, Aspect Colts backup quarterback, he just says there is that special connection with Luck and Hilton that, that you can't really put your finger on, but those guys just always seem to be on the same page for, for big, big plays. Uh, we saw last year when Hilton had to emerge with Reggie Wayne, Terrence ACL, he became that true number one receiver. We saw it in the Chiefs game, in that playoff game, that historic comeback. Hilton, 220 some yards receiving. Then the next week, against a key to leave, and the Patriots, knowing what he can do, he still had over 100 yards receiving. So when he came out of Florida International, he had a torn quad, so he fell a little bit in the draft. And again, a GM's kind of got to stick his neck out there to be able to take a, a, a guy that's listed at five eight and you know barely even about 180, 190 pounds. Um, so he fell a little bit. The Colts traded back into the third round to take Hilton. Uh, he didn't participate a ton during off-season activity, so Andrew Luck really didn't get his first work with them until training camp, and then into the, he actually missed the, um, the 2012 season opener. Still had five 100-yard games as a rookie, and again, he is really shattering all Colts' young rookie records. That includes Marvin Harrison and Reggie Wayne. He's challenging a lot of NFL marks, and it's, it's, it's pretty special what he's doing. He is definitely a big play, deep threat guy for this offense, but he is still a true number one receiver when you need him to be. Andrew Luck has, has looked his way many times for critical third down completions this year. Uh, he has a very high percentage in terms of his catches going for first down. So just because he has that, that, that elite speed uh, doesn't mean that he's He's not a complete receiver. I think the NFL is starting to take notice, and uh, I think he's definitely high atop Bill Belichick's game plan list for Sunday night. Yeah, I certainly think that would be in his best interest. I certainly remember uh, Hilton coming onto the scene uh, that last year at Florida, Florida International before coming out. And then, like you said, kind of uh, fell under the radar. But when he reemerged, everybody was like, oh, yeah, I remember him. I remember <laughs> him. So definitely great to see. He had a lot of big games in those midweek games at Florida National play down there. and um, He had some of his best games against those early season games where Florida National played Alabama and he had a part return for a touchdown. He played Louisville on a midweek game. That's a game Andrew Luck remembers watching in college. Luck, obviously being at Stanford, said he remembers watching this little jitterbug out on the field. See why I was number four back then and was just curious you know, who this kid was. And then after you draft Kobe Fleener and Dwayne Allen, Hilton is in the mix as well. So um, this is a guy that, 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 yes, he played at a small school, could have gone to West Virginia, wanted to stay home, uh, but definitely made a name for himself when Florida National played some of those bigger teams. 
Yes, he did. And then moving over, uh, like you said, uh, here we are, Kevin. Now, one of the things we talked about uh, earlier in the year was uh, if possible, uh, I would assume like any other team in the AFC, if you had your choice, you would prefer to have uh, a home game uh, as opposed to going out to Denver or New England uh, to play in the playoffs. Uh, Indianapolis looking to take that next step after winning uh, a playoff game last year and then subsequently going out and losing in, uh, in New England. Uh, here they are, uh, set, uh, six and three. Uh, New England's coming in seven and two. If Indianapolis can get the win, uh, they will have one head-to-head -head matchup with uh, one of the juggernauts in the AFC underneath their belt and kind of control their own destiny. Uh, if it comes down to a tiebreaker uh, on the offensive side of the football, uh, what does Indianapolis feel they need to do uh, this week in order to attack uh, a very complex uh, Bill Belichick defense? I, I you know, I, I get mixed reviews. Uh, the Patriots a lot of times are unable to get a pass rush they seem to have uh, receivers running wide open through the secondary we've seen that uh, against the Jets we've seen it against Kansas City we've seen it against Miami in the second half uh, but then in other games uh, they show up big and they, they find ways to get pressure and their their lights out in the secondary so what's the plan uh, this week for Indianapolis trying to uh, attack this Bill Belichick uh, defense I think the biggest thing is getting off to a fast start though like I said earlier it's the first time the Colts have played the Patriots at home since 2009, and, and there are major January implications on the line. you got to speed off that home crowd. You want to have that chance to play that home game back in January. Two, I said it best earlier this week. We have them here. We, we want to have them here again in January. Um, the Patriots have won 34 straight games at home against the AFC team. They're very tough to play in Foxborough, as everyone knows. So a win on Sunday would go a long way in terms of trying to secure some home field advantage for the Colts. In terms of what they're looking to do on offense, I think it again is stay balanced and rely on all of your weapons, which has been what Andrew Luck has done all season long. Eight players have caught at least 15 balls. When you look at last year's playoff loss to the Patriots, of those eight players, only two of them caught passes in that game. You know, Reggie Wayne was missing. He was on injured reserve. Ahmad Bradshaw was on IR. Dwayne Allen was on IR. Dante Moncrief was still in college. Akeem Nix with the Giants. Those guys are all in the full now. Uh, T.Y. Hilton and Kobe Fleener were the only two guys who played in that game who now see extended action um, for, for the Colts. So, again, if Belichick is able to take away T.Y. Hilton, which you know he's going to try to do with either Darrell Rivas or Brandon Brown, or rely on those other weapons. I, I, I could see a big game out of Dwayne Allen. He's an emerging young tight end in this league. If it weren't for Gronk and Julius Thomas, he'd be a, you know probably a Pro Bowl candidate. He's got seven receiving touchdowns on the year. Can you isolate him in some uh, non-traditional matchups? Uh, you know, try to get him on a defensive back here and there. Uh, don't sleep on Reggie Wayne. Yeah, so he turns 36 on Monday, uh, but he is coming off a 100-yard game that he had. Excuse me, he had a touchdown against the Giants, 70 yards receiving, coming back from that elbow injury. So you have weapons on this team just outside of T.Y. Hill. You know Belichick's going to do everything he can to take away that. Um, and again, Colt, get off to a fast start. Try to keep that keep that twelfth man in it because this is one of those home games, um, just like Denver was last year for this team. Green Bay a couple years ago when Chuck Pagano missed his first game with leukemia. This is a game that has a lot of hype around it, and the Colts have played very well in those games in the past few years. De excuse me, definitely. And then last, uh, defensively, um, you know, what is the uh, game plan? Like you said, uh, Rob Gronkowski right now playing at a very high level. Uh, Tom Brady has certainly found his groove. Uh, Brandon LaFell is now in, in the fold. I know New England's a team that uh, really hasn't uh, found that running back. Uh, so kind of similar to Indianapolis. It's all about being in the air. Uh, how did the plan, uh, Colts plan to stop uh, Tom Brady in this offense? I think Gronk, Gronk gets a ton of attention, and very, very deservedly so. I saw a stat this week in his last 19 targets. He has 18 catches uh, in that five-game winning streak. He's got seven catches for 100 yards. He's averaging. So the Colts have struggled a little bit with tight ends during the season. Um, Jarrell Freeman is back and healthy, though. That's the Colts starting inside linebacker. This is a guy um, that came over from the Canadian Football League where obviously the field's a little bit wider, so his coverage ability is something of an asset, and that's going to be needed on Sunday night. He was banged up earlier in the year against Denver when Julius Thomas had a big game. He missed the Philadelphia game when Zach Ertz had a big game. So now he's back in the lineup. He's healthy. I'd expect him to get a get a crack at Gronk. But again, you're going to need to throw multiple bodies, multiple looks at him. Uh, one thing looking at tape this week, Gronk gets free release off the line of scrimmage so often. And it, it, I think that's something that the Colts can you know maybe chip him here or there. 
disrupt some of that timing. That's going to alleviate the Colts' pass rush. Um, again, like I said earlier, that's paramount. you got to get Brady off his spot. you got to do something there um, to get him you know, thinking twice about where he's going to go with the football. Um, field position is another thing that I think that I think the defense is going to have to rely on against the Broncos. The Patriots average is starting field position to the 38-yard line. Um, the Colts need to protect the ball better. That's something they led the NFL in last year. They've struggled this year in it. If they protect the football, rely on their special teams unit, which has been splendid all season long, that's going to help the field position. And, uh, and again, I think it, the Colts can do those things. There's no reason why late in the fourth quarter this isn't going to be a one possession game and you arguably have the most clutch kicker in NFL history on your side as well. Definitely and ultimately, Kevin, uh, do the Colts win this ball game? I think they do. I think, again, the combination of playing at home, being healthy, this is probably the healthiest the Colts have been in a long, long time. If they can get Eric Walden and Arthur Jones back in the lineup, that would help as well. Uh, both guys practiced yesterday. Practice is about to begin here. For, for Friday, um, but again, if the Colts can get off to a quick start, keep that 12th man on their side, uh, I think having that full lot of skill players, Andrew Luck is playing at an MVP type level, I think it's going to be another storied game in such a rich rivalry, 15 times, this will be the 15th meeting since 2003 that these two teams have met, every time it seems like it's a prime time game with serious playoff implications, this is obviously falling at the same script, I think the Colts will pull this one out, um, 34-28. All right, great, Kevin. Well, uh, thanks a lot for uh, coming on. We definitely look forward to uh, talking to you uh, a little bit later on in the season as the uh, playoffs are approaching, and uh, we're all excited uh, for this big game. Like you said, Sunday night can't get here uh, fast enough, so uh, good luck to you guys, and thanks for coming on this morning. Definitely. Thanks, Lance. I'll talk to you later in the year. Okay, talk to you later. Thanks, Kevin. All right.